let us start with the shanti part please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back all in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes awareness of your head neck shoulders arms chest upper back abdomen lower back hips legs the whole body shift your awareness to your breath normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness i am breathing in and i know i am aware i am breathing in i am breathing out and i know i am aware i am breathing out let this be the form of your awareness for some time shift your awareness once again bring it to your eyebrow center bhrumantya and visualize a beautiful bright radiant jyoti flame at the eyebrow center experience its glow and radiance and maintaining your awareness on this experience at the eyebrow center let us chant the mantra om three times together followed by the shanti mantras taking in a deep breath oh 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 together Om sahana vavato sahana bhunakto sah viryam karavavahai तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मेद्विषा ओ शाति 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 हरि ओम हरि ओम तत्सत जेंटली रव्य पाम सगे सी जदर प्लेट एम ऑफ द क्लोज गाइड experience the warmth radiating from the palms to the eyes to the brain to the whole body and then gently move the palms away open your eyes hari om tat sat namo narayan jai ho so a very warm welcome to all the delegates attending this session on introduction to chakras when we speak of chakras then we need to understand and assume that we have some basic understanding of yoga and we have some basic understanding of ourselves who am i this is a question which has haunted human kind from time immemorial and based on the perceptions different civilizations 
have tried to ponder on this question and answer this. And there have been a lot of work which has happened on this. In India, we are fortunate to be the proud and hopefully responsible descendants carrying this great heritage of a civilization which has experienced, known, codified and transmitted ahead the knowledge of this question. Who am I? I remember years ago when we were studying, when I was studying at that time, we were introduced to a very famous physicist, Feynman, Richard Feynman. And he was a extraordinary person. And in one of his lectures, he has mentioned that if there is one bit of information which I would like to transmit ahead to the further generations in case of an apocalypse. Suppose there is a disaster, a huge tsunami or something much higher than that and the entire world is going to collapse as we know it and we get an opportunity to share one bit of knowledge to the further generations, Feynman said, I would like to tell them that the atom exists. If they know this bit, they will be able to bring out everything in science. That is very true. If we do not know the basics of an atom, the knowledge of the external world is incomplete. But what is this knowledge? What is this science that we need to understand? In the times of Galileo, this knowledge and this curiosity had started increasing. And roughly at this time, Galileo and others of his time, a few 50 years here and there, they decided, not formally, not in a congregation, but just it happened over a period of time. They said that those matters which are not related to th those subjects which are not related to matter are quite abstract. For some time, let us keep them aside and deal with these matters. And science as we know progressed from this point onwards. The last three, four hundred years of science is this journey. But this is the journey of matter. However, people have from time immemorial realized that I am this body, yes. I am this mind, yes. I am these emotions, yes. I am the senses, yes. But there is something more to me than just this. There is some thing which is beyond all of these. A higher dimension. And that dimension can only be perceived when you go beyond the dimension of mind. Our senses our sense organs, our organs of action, our body, our emotions, our intellect, everything that we are so proud of is under the purview of the mind. But when we are able to go beyond the mind, then 
there is a newer dimension which comes in. And this is the dimension of consciousness. Science as we know it had delved only into matter. In ancient scientific terminologies, this is known varyingly as Prakriti, as Shakti. Sometimes it is also known as Maya. No matter what we call it, it is under her purview that this entire visible and invisible world is. However, that works on a principle of energetics. There is a very subtle but very powerful energy which exists. And this energy is responsible for the functioning of this body. When we are able to activate a higher liver and we are able to activate an higher avatara as one would like to call, then higher abilities start coming in. And at that point of time, it appears that suddenly we have got more abilities, things which appear to be magical. But they are not magical. There is a science behind it. You see, merely 50, 70, 80 years ago, things which were in fiction are today normal. If I want to talk to somebody in America or any part of the world, it's very easily possible. I just pick up a small rectangular piece of material and immediately I'm able to talk to anybody across the world. For a person who has not seen this, it will appear magical that I just hold my hand and I start talking and the person over there starts listening. Some of you might also remember when the mobile phones came in. That time there was an ad. And in this ad, it was shown that there was a person across in a restaurant. And here there was a young beautiful lady. And she was smiling. And she was nodding. And she was... And they were across, there was a middle-aged and elderly person. Now this person was suddenly flattered. Oh, this person, this young lady, she's smiling at me. She's, you know. So he was very flattered. Immediately he st straightened his shirt, tie. And then it is shown in the ad that she had her hand like this. But in her hand, there was a small mobile. So externally, I don't know what is happening. But internally, there was the mobile. So in the same way, for people who don't know mobile and then it feels that, oh, I'm talking, I'm doing some magic. But is it magic? No. It is very dedicated hard work by which we have harnessed the principles of science and made something which is almost impossible as possible. What we have tried to do in the world external is also possible in the world internal. Just as you have got a transmitter and a receiver in your mobile, you can also have a transmitter and a receiver in your hardware inside here. The point is, we need to fine tune that. We need to upgrade our softwares. We need to upgrade our hardwares. We need to upgrade our firmwares. And then anything start happening. If suddenly I start hearing things, I will feel I am going into a hallucination or into psychosis. But when you study, then you start understanding that, oh, I am actually able to hear something which is in the room beyond. And when I'm able to hear something in the room beyond, to me it appears magical. But to a person who knows about the mobile and that technology, it just feels, oh, it's natural. 
in the same manner many of the things which we hear in our ancient scriptures that a person just closed his eyes and was able to communicate to people was able to see something if you look at it from this perspective then it becomes possible to understand it in a different light it is this science that we are speaking about it is also known as the esoteric science the higher abilities in human beings can be uncovered and one can become a genius a person extraordinary and when we do that then something changes i am sure all of us have seen an apple fall from a tree but how many of us have ever pondered why is it that the apple falls down and does not fly up newton thought about it and he became newton beethoven mozart so many people if we start looking at the list of people who are geniuses michael angelo moses jesus buddha kalidasa the saints kabir das tukaram nyaneshwar all of them for some time or oh, even you can even uh, understand yogeshwar krishna maryada purushottam ram for some time don't think of them as god or as an avatar or as a prophet but just look at them as an individual and when you look at them as an individual then you find that oh wow if you study you will find that their life is the life of a yogi it is said that hanuman jumped across to lanka and if you read in valmiki ramayan the details of all of that swami ji used to say a person who has studied yoga can immediately make out that these are the various siddhis which have been displayed in times of need by so there are things which are possible for us in the world internal by which we can uncover this genius in bhagavad gita yogeshwar krishna has said wherever you see genius know that to be me because that is the essence of divinity now it is up to us how we channelize this divinity if we have somebody like hitler we all know what can happen if we have somebody like osama bin laden we know what can happen they are not ordinary people by any uh, yardstick of measurement they are all people who are really very extraordinary hitler did not force people in the it is said that in the earlier days hitler when he used to talk he was the first person who you started using broadcasting and when he used to talk people would just get mesmerized what is it that does it it is not that he forced everybody he started moving and his energy was such that people got swept away the same thing has been described with mohandas karamchand gandhi i have personally met people who said that when gandhi ji used to come to their villages and he would leave from there people would drop what they are doing and would get fired up and follow behind and so much so that they would not mind getting blows on their head and they would die but not retreat and not retaliate 
He did not do it by giving them some money or by giving them some lure. No. Never. There was an internal strength. Be it Hitler, be it Gandhiji, be it Moses, be it Jesus. They are all people who had this inner strength, inner beauty, inner glow. And this glow pulled people and took them along. Of course, there might be some small appearance wherein this divine energy was misused. But it is up to us how to use this energy. The knife is given in the hands of a doctor and also in the hands of a big pocket. It is up to a person. Do I use the knife to save the life of a person or do I use the knife to end life? It's up to me. And it is this which is very difficult. A monkey can be trained to drive a vehicle. But how good a driver would he be? That's a profound question. Can we train a monkey to focus or will he be moving his mind? A monkey by definition, his mind jumps from point to point like our mind. So, he is not going to be a safe driver. In the same way, this energy, the Kundalini Shakti, can be awakened within us. But how safe is it? That we need to know. That is something which is essential. And that is not something which is easy. And that is the reason why these practices have been handed with great care. Why? Because we do not want accidents to happen. We do not want to give the nuclear button in the hands of a person who does not know the consequences of that nuclear explosion. But this indicates that there is some higher energy within us. Yes, those were geniuses. Those were extraordinary people. It is said of Jesus that he would touch people and they would get healed. He would raise people from the dead. Science of Prana Vidya. How could he do it? Because he was an established yogi. There are people who can play with matter. That is a sign of an established yogi. There are people who can make many amazing things happen. That is a sign of an established yogi. He might present himself in any way. But that is a sign of a genius. Question today is, can we, who are ordinary people, can we tap into this higher energy. Yes, we can. It is possible. And the process is through yoga. And the process is slow and steady. If you expect that you will have instant nirvana, I don't think it is ever possible. And it is also not very good to do it. It is safe to go after checking everything properly. Otherwise, there can be accidents. So, this is what we need to follow. How do we do this? This energy has a pathway. And it has got junctions. These are the chakras and nadis. And any practice, spiritual practice or yogic practice, ultimately has the effect on this basic energy principle within us. And when these principles start getting activated, 
our abilities our perceptions our understandings start coming up our energy comes up our illnesses start moving away we become a better person we are able to respond to the same situation differently this is what is very essential it is possible for each and every one of us no matter where we are in which state of life we are in which state of life we are we are able to achieve a higher goal in life we start from the base aadhar swadhisthan manipur anahat vishuddhi adnya bindu sahasrar these are the main chakras and when the energy these chakras are purified when the pathways are purified then it becomes easy and possible for this energy to flow up and down without causing any destructive effect within us that is the practice of chakra shuddhi each chakra is associated with multiple dimensions we had earlier spoken of who am i and our ancestors have said that we are the body we are the mind we are the senses and all of this comes from five basic principles which were called as the earth water fire air and space the pancha tatvas the pancha maha bhutas and these chakras have an impact on that again these chakras are like nodal junctions for the different dimensions of our human personality our human personality has got five dimensions annamay kosh pranamay kosh manomay kosh vidnyanamay kosh and anandamay kosh these are the five dimensions and these nodes these chakras they are the junction points where the energy flows between these five dimensions of our human personality if there is a problem in one of the dimensions it will finally manifest in the body we do not know how we can reach that dimension chakra shuddhi chakra knowledge of the chakras allows us to this is what is very important and when we do that we are able to have a better health have a better mental ability have greater insight have better responses and we can convert the challenges the limitations the obstacles in our life and convert them into opportunities of growth do you think that all those people who were geniuses had no problems in their lives they had then many problems many limitations but they were able to awaken something by which those problems those limitations became almost irrelevant and they were able to make a mark on society in their own life feel fulfilled feel happy feel healthy how to do this this is possible through the practices of chakra awareness chakra shuddhi usually these practices are done in an ashram setting because the energy kundalini is very very powerful 100000 times more powerful than the nuclear energy and if we activate this energy without proper precautions it can lead to disastrous consequences and essentially to avoid these disasters we are advised to do all these practices in a proper 
ashram setting under appropriate guidance and therefore necessarily these practices which we practice now online they need to be modulated such that we take care that there is no inappropriate mistake which could happen leading to some untoward consequences in life as doctors we are trained and we are taught one thing first maxim is first do no harm you cure or don't cure doesn't matter first do no harm only when you are sure that it is not going to do any harm then you move ahead in the same manner the practices which we will be performing here these practices are in such a manner that it will help us very slowly and steadily grow and upgrade ourselves once many years ago it was guru purnima time and gurudev was giving satsang and then a person comes up to him and says swami ji i would like to have the experience of kundalini swami ji looked at him and said ha ah, main to de sakta hu kya tum usko sahan karne ke kabil ho 11000 volt ki bijli 220 volt ke tar mein se agar chala do use ho jaoge sahan nahi kar sakoge main to yun de dunga these were swami ji's words main to yun de dunga tum sahan nahi kar first thing is our wiring has to be upgraded do we have any electrical engineer or a person with knowledge of electricity with us i'm sure we will have said many ankit i am i am a computer engineer sir are bhai bijli ke bare mein thoda to malum to hai na ha common sense malum hai common sense malum hai to batlaiyega ki uh 4 mm tar mein 4 mm copper wire mein maximum lagbhag kitna current aap bhej sakte hain what is the current that can be passed through a 4 mm copper wire approximately मुझे इतना पता है कि जैसे अपने घरों में पावर के प्लग्स होते हैं राइट तो पावर के प्लग्स में से हायर वोल्टेज वाला करंट आता है उसमें अगर आप नॉर्मल वायर लगा दोगे तो वो वायर वायर चल जाएगा सो इसलिए वहां पर वी हैव टू वेरी केयरफुल एंड यूज दो you know we have two different types of plugs in our uh, system we have a 5 mm. ampere plug and a 15 ampere plug mm. what will happen if you up, uh, put in a 15 ampere gadget which draws 15 ampere current into a plug which can give out only 5 amperes it will draw more current and what happens to the wire it melts and there is a short circuit correct गैजेट एंड आई नीड आई हैव ओनली दैट वन सिंगल इलेक्ट्रिक पॉइंट आउटलेट what is it that i have to do i i have to step down and reduce the current uh But if if you reduce the current then this uh, gadget will not work upgrade the wire upgrade the wire upgrade the wire yes. correct that is what we need to do so that means we have to upgrade our hardware upgrading our hardware is the first step second thing we have to ensure that the joints and everything are correct there is no uh loose joints etc so we have to take care of that 
So these are the preparatory practices which we need to do. Then these preparatory practices upgrades our internal hardware. It activates it, makes it ready. And once the hardware is ready, at the same time, we have to work on our software. Because if our software is not in sync with the hardware, again, there's going to be a problem. So we have to upgrade our software also. And then we are able to utilize this higher energy. And then when we activate this higher energy, then immediately we have geniuses coming in our midst, something which appears to be a problem. You come up with an answer. This is possible for each and every one of us. No matter what age, no matter what state of life, no matter what health, it is possible for every one of us. And the system which Swamiji has spoken about, it goes systematically, step by step, in a slow, steady manner, allowing us to upgrade ourselves at our pace. And when that happens, then automatically, Internally, things start sprouting up, coming up, and that genius within us gets activated. And this energy can then be directed in the di dimension we want. I am sure many of you might have met doctors, and you. I have personally heard different people saying, "Ye doctor sahab ke clinic." I am sure you have also heard sometimes about this. Have you? Sune hai ye baat? Yes. Have you ever thought? How is it possible? This is possible because the inner ability of this person has been upgraded. This is what we want. So we have a doctor who has channelized this energy knowingly unknowingly in medicine. We have a genius uh, electric engineer. You have a genius electronic engineer. You have a genius designer. You have multiple geniuses who can do something which is almost impossible for us ordinary people to do. How? Because by, from their previous births, they have been able to activate this energy to some degree and that energy has been directed in a specific subject and he becomes genius. The scientific systematic method is to activation of the chakras, of the nadis and then the higher energy gradually ascends, healing us, uplifting us, transforming us. And to do this, we need to employ multiple paths, integrate them, then we can move. That is the basis of chakras, that is the basis of any sadhana any spiritual practice or even higher yogic practice. So, if we are serious and committed students of yoga, if we are people who want to go ahead in life, achieve things which appear impossible, we want peace of mind, we want something which appears impossible, then this is the path which is there for us. I think that in a nutshell covers the introduction on the chakras as a system for enriching, improving, nourishing and transforming our lives. Before I go ahead on any other topic, if you have any doubts, if you have any questions, then 
I would like to spend some time on interaction and question answer. Over to you. Swamiji, you had uh, earlier mentioned like the chakra shuti that we attended last time. We covered two chakras uh, in I think about 10 sessions. But this time you, uh, you're taking four chakras together. So uh, could you tell us like why this uh, you know, difference in the module is there? Um, you see, uh, we have in this Chakra Shuddhi series, we have six chakras which will be covered. Muladhar, Swadhishthan, Manipur, Anahat, Vishuddhi and Adnya. And in the end, it is not individual chakras which can work because chakras don't work in isolation. They work in tandem. So we will need all these practices to be integrated as one. But so that we can move systematically. So therefore, I have brought broken it down into three modules so that it doesn't become too overwhelming for us. In the first module, we spoke about Muladhar and Swadhishti. And then I gave a gap of some time so that you can internalize this knowledge, you can understand it, assimilate it, become comfortable with it. And now we move ahead. But because there is a gap which has happened in between, therefore it is essential that we need to revise those topics. And this is also in reason, because many people said that, Swamiji, uh, we did not know about this uh, Chakra Shuddhi course and so we have missed. So is there no way? Of course, there is a way. To be able to allow other participants to join in, that is the reason why we have revision of these two chakras, Muladhar and Swatishthan, and then we move into Manipur and Anahat. When we go into Manipur and Anahat, it is not that we will be working only with those chakras. We will also be, by default, working with the lower two chakras also. But so that we can understand it, assimilate it, correlate, that is the reason why I have made it an, into a slightly longer module so that it helps people who have done the course earlier. And also it gives an opportunity, a chance for people who haven't been a part of this earlier to join in and experience that breakthrough in our lives. Namunarayan Swamiji. Swamiji, uh, like tattvas, like, you know, all five elements, same way koshas, like a repository. So what is chakras actually in that sense? What does chakra mean to you? Yes, Swamiji. Like Tatwa, when we say those are five elements, like earth, no, no, ether. No, no, no. Hey, ita high five, mat boliye na. Simple <laughs> thing boliye. Chakkar, chakkar katna ka matlab kya hota hai? Uh, going round and round. Going like. round and round. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Have uh, I don't know if uh, you have. Uh, have you seen that there there used to be uh, trams in. Uh, India and in some parts of Europe, they are still there. A long time ago, there used to be trams in India. Have you have you ever seen trams? Yes, Swamiji. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now in Mumbai, there used to be when the trams were present, there used to be certain tram terminus, Parel tram terminus, Dadar tram terminus, uh, Sion tram terminus. King Circle Tram Terminus, Cyan ta Tram Terminus. And they were okay. all in a straight line. The tram road was straight. And in between, there is this big circle, which was the okay. terminus. Okay. And from this terminus point, there were different lines which could come. In today's uh, communications, we can call this as the junction nodes. From the junction, that is a place where everything comes together. And from here, information goes in a different direction. Information has come across the main network. And then 
there is branching off of this information. You have the switch and then it branches off and it goes to multiple areas and it goes back up and down. Correct? Inji, Swamiji. Yes. So, a place where this happens, there is a junction which takes place and this junction is known as chakra. Okay. Okay. It's clear now. Ji. Ji. So, it's basically a distribution point for the energy, right? Yes. This energy, which is the normal energy, this energy, which is a higher energy. In fact, you will be surprised to know that all the chakras, they uh, almost, uh, uh, very, very, uh, they have a, almost a one-to-one -one correlation with the different plexuses of the autonomic nervous system within our body. You have heard of the sympathetic and parasympathetic, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. So this sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, it has got plexuses at different parts. The coccygeal plexus, the perineal plexus, the sacral plexus, the solar plexus, the heart plexus, and then the eyebrow center. These are all different plexuses in the body which correlate with these centers. And from these centers, information moves into multiple dimensions. And when you dissect, you will see that this plexus also has got a circular shape more or less. That is the correlation. What we see on the physical dimension as the plexuses of the autonomic nervous system on a higher dimension correlate with these chakras. They are not limited only to that, but they correlate. Okay. okay. Thank you, Swamiji. Namo Narayan. Uh, uh, this may be a little sidestepping question or may require another another uh, session itself. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to uh, uh, understand the references. There are a lot of references of the chakras in different mantras also, like Ganapati Atharoshi, Shantwam Muratharas, Pitonistam. And uh, in 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 other uh, Lanta Satnam also, and in different distinct. So, uh, 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 does it signify that those manifestations of lords are at, are are part of those chakras that we are here on? I don't know if it uh, requires a lot of explanation, but this the details of this, of course, will be covered in this uh, Chakra Shuddhi series, where uh, these points will be discussed. But uh, suffice to know that Devata is not the form which we see. Devata mm -hmm. is a manifestation of a typical a certain frequency of energy. Mm -hmm. And in the same manner that you have sound energy and you have a remote. Mm -hmm. But does the same remote which works on your television work for your car, work for your AC, work for your other gadgets? No. It, it, it has, each one has its own specific frequency. Exactly. So, if you call the devatas as sound energy, then you can understand the frequency which goes and operates your television as one devata another equipment as another devata, third devata and so on and so forth. Mm. Now, uh, which button, which remote should I use so that I activate which energy? That is spoken in these stotras. But it is spoken in a graphic manner, in a manner which is what you computer engineer guys call as Encrypted knowledge. Ankit, what does encrypted knowledge mean? It cannot be seen by naked eye. It cannot be seen. But somebody can decrypt it, right? Hmm. So if you have the right keys, you can decrypt it and then it will make sense. Yes. So, why is it encrypted? Because everybody... 
yeah everybody should need should not have an access to the uh, to protect the core hmm. to, Why? to save to safeguard the core because it has to function at its designated uh, uh, it has to function at uh, as it is designed to be in its designated place and in between there should not be any leakages or falling into wrong hands or whatever aha it should not fall into wrong hands wrong hands what will happen if it falls into wrong hands it definitely misuse. can be misuse it yeah there will be uh, destruction negative uh, effects yes avoid that encryption takes place in the same manner encryption is done of all this knowledge so that we can have so that we can have this knowledge which is available to everybody but it can be accessed only by those who know how to access it see you, i i am sure all of you would know that story of uh, the dhanushya which only shri ram could lift yes. nobody else could lift right yes. don't you think for a moment that there should wouldn't have been some encryption which was there the yes. moment shri ram knew the password he did it till the time that password was not there nobody could do it correct yes yes same way this knowledge this that dhanush was visible to everybody yes. everybody can try and lift it but only those who have the key can lift it otherwise they can same way all these stotras if you actually look at lalita sahasra naam it is full tantrics it is it is entire kundalini yoga because kundalini is devi she is shakti but if you just try to read the languages you don't make much sense and this is where many of the translators in the past who were not from the indian uh, background they could not make sense out of the translation because many things were written in between lines and obviously they did, could not know much about it this is done so that information doesn't fall into wrong hands activation doesn't take place accidentally and accidents don't sure. all these chantings i mean what, what is chanting after all what is chanting after all chanting is sound and we have been speaking about i mean today what we are able to do you are sitting in one corner of the country somebody else is in another corner of the world and we are all now virtually coming together it is all because of sound energy vibrations is sound is mantra not vibrations when you process sound in a specific manner then your remote works when you process sound in another manner or vibrations in another manner your cataract can be taken out when you process it in a third manner your kidney stone can be crushed without any operation when you do it in a fourth manner you can remove the uh, vision uh, problems your glasses can be taken care of but for each and every one of them the processing has to be different in the same manner when we process sound in a specific manner such that these inner trigger points or chakras can be activated then that is known as mantra so that we can understand it easily it is given a form it is given a name and there is a science behind it it is not done in a haphazard manner but that is something by which we can relate to it but even if we are not able to relate to it and we keep chanting it in the correct pronunciation and intonation and manner it will have that impact on us inside that is the beauty of mantra and mantra forms an integral part of the sadhana sure sure 
Thank you. So, Amit ji, I have a question, Shweta here. So, we uh, we are told to recite the mantras in our head also. Many times, you know, you can't say anything in your mind, so you can mantra in your mind. So, how would those mantras work if they are all sound energies or sound? Is there then no use of reciting the mantras in our head? Good question. Tell me, do we are we able to hear all the sounds? <laughs> no. There is something known as what? What is the uh, hertz range which is audible to yeah. this ear? I forgot, but it is very low. I mean, it, it, twenty hertz very... to twenty thousand hertz. Mm. So does it mean that there is no sound beyond twenty thousand hertz? It's that the entire can... spectrum is there. Sorry. Yes. Bats, bats can hear very low frequency. Ah. So, just as there are frequencies where in sound exists but is not heard by these ears, in the same way, when you close your eyes, when you internalize yourself and chant it mentally, then you are using a different frequency. And when you are able to focus yourself and only that frequency is happening, then the impact is stronger. Okay. Understood. And the more you focus, make it one-pointed, the stronger it is. If you shine a torch, that torch will not reach the moon. That torch will not cut through iron or steel. But if you apply a process, make all the light, instead of scattering in different directions, come in one direction, same frequency, it becomes a laser. laser. And when it becomes a laser, it cuts through steel and it can go and hit the moon and come back. Right? So in the same way, when in the mind we are chanting, but at the same time, there are 100 different things coming in. Then it is like a torchlight. And when we quieten all this cacophony of the mind and let only one frequency come up, then it is like a laser. And when it is like a laser, magic starts happening. That is the significance of ekagrata. That is the need. Swamiji, I have a question. Ankit, this yeah. side. Yeah. So when we talk about spirituality, uh, ek, uh, I have a question in mind. So uh, I'll just take uh, for reference uh, uh, Osho, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, Osho, ne jise jo bataya for his spirituality, he uh, many of majority of his talks and books he focuses a lot on dhyan, which is like the meditation, and then he speaks about. Uh, different uh, ways of meditations into vidhya jo bolte hain jinko like you know you focus uh, on your breath or your moving thoughts and then he spoke at great length in various talks about the sakshi uh, you become aware of what is happening at the body level and the mind level and that is where he starts ki aap ek ek bar jaise aap body ka sakshi bante ho fir mind ke sakshi bante ho and then from there the journey starts and then it will take you forward right so mm -hmm. that is that path uh, in that path there is uh, he doesn't talk about or uh, mentions that uh, there has to be a chakra shuddhi which has to be done he simply focuses on that path so my question is ki chakra shuddhi is something which automatically happens while you know uh, that journey is happening uh, or is this is this something which has to happen एज ए साइड मतलब साथ में ये करना ही पड़ेगा तभी उस बात पे आप आगे जाओगे या इन दोनों में कोई लिंक है या नहीं भी है लिंक तो वो मेरा क्वेश्चन है या इट हैपेंस दैट इज व्हाट आई हिंटेड एट नो मैटर व्हाट साधना यू डू अल्टीमेटली द अल्टीमेट कॉमन पाथवे इज हियर देयर वाज एन एक्सपेरिमेंट व्हिच वाज डन फॉर एथलीट्स दे वर आस्क्ड टू रन एंड देयर वर इलेक्ट्रोड्स व्हिच वर पुट एट डिफरेंट पार्ट्स measuring how their muscles were contracting how the heart was pumping everything how the hormones were uh, going out etc 
and then hmm. these athletes were asked to lie down in a special chair and they were asked to visualize with complete detail the process of r- running you are lying down but you are visualizing and to their amazement they found that those athletes who could visualize perfectly in those athletes the degree of neural firing the degree of hormones running everything was exactly as if they were running actually they were lying mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. they were running why does that happen it happens because ultimately either you visualize about it or you actually experience it externally the final pathway of perception is the same mm. that is the, also the reason why when you speak of a gulab jamun or a karela if you speak of gulab jamun oh immediately mouth starts watering you see a gulab jamun again mouth starts watering why because the final pathway is the same in asthma the same thing you, sometimes you just think of a flower which has got lot of pollen in it and the person starts getting an asthmatic attack why because the final pathway is the same in the hmm. same manner the final pathway is the pathway through the chakras through the nadis and i will give you a beautiful example there is a chakra at the base of the throat which is known as the vishuddhi chakra and swami ji very beautifully described is it as kal kut ko pachane wala vish ko pachane wala aur amrut ko taiyar karne wala chakra hai vishuddhi chakra so a person who has practiced yog sadhana activates his vishuddhi chakra he can eat poison nothing will happen to it there is an example भगवान शंकर जो है उनका एक नाम क्या है नीलकंठ नीलकंठ का कहानी क्या है उन्होंने विष प्राशन किया और देवी जी ने उनके गर्दन को पकड़ लिया देवी जी तो कुंडलिनी है ना मतलब उन्होंने कुंडलिनी को विशुद्धि में ले आए विशुद्धि को फुल्ली एक्टिवेट कर दिए पूरा विष पच गया ये तो भगवान शिव जी की कहानी भगवान शिव तो आदि योगी हैं आदि गुरु भी हैं वो बहुत साधना भी करते थे दूसरी कहानी भक्त भक्तों में श्रेष्ठ मीराबाई उनकी तो कहानी आप जानते हैं उनको भी उनके वेल विशर्स ने विष प्राशन करा दिया था और उन्होंने भगवान का प्रसाद मांग करके उसको प्राशन कर लिया क्या हुआ क्या हुआ विष उनको बाधित किया क्या नहीं नहीं किया बिल्कुल तो आप उसको जादू बोल सकते हैं या आप उसको विशुद्धि चक्र को एक्टिवेट कर दिया गया जिसके चलते विष को डाइजेस्ट कर लिया गया ये बोल सकते हैं अब मीराबाई उन्होंने तो कोई आसन प्राणायाम ध्यान मेडिटेशन कुछ तो किया नहीं था लेकिन उनके सब चक्र जग गए क्यों क्योंकि उन्होंने भक्ति योग का अभ्यास किया था तो आप कोई भी अभ्यास कीजिए अंततो गत्वा इसी पर उसका परिणाम होता है हाँ चक्र शुद्धि से हम करते हैं तो वो रास्ता थोड़ा सा आसान होता है और उसके साथ में अलग अलग चीजों को जोड़ना जरूरी है केवल चक्र शुद्धि करते रहेंगे तब भी कठिन होता है लेकिन चक्र शुद्धि के साथ साथ अलग अलग चीज करना पड़ता है कर्म क्षय करना पड़ता है कर्म योग करना पड़ता है सेवा करनी पड़ती है तब जाकर के इसका प्रभाव दुगना तिगुना दस गुना बढ़ जाता है तो ये उसका मूलभूत है 
is that clear uh, was there anybody who did not understand hindi i i i just forgot and i spoke in hindi i hope everybody understands hindi is there anybody who didn't i couldn't understand the whole thing but i got the gist of it the idea the basic idea is uh, that no matter what sadhana you do the final pathway always works through the nadis and the chakras and it is the kundalini which awakens either you do it by kundalini yoga you do it by hatha yoga you do it by raja yoga you do it by kriya yoga you do it by tantra you do it by bhakti finally it is this pathway which awakens shiva the highest yogi was able to do it and he became nilakantha and meera bai who never practiced asan pranayam in her life was also able to do it by the same thing the same activity took place methodology is very different so shilpa i think we are already gone beyond uh, 8:30 this was still 8:30 right uh, till 9 o'clock swami ji uh, we've been greedy <laughs> but uh, we'll respect your time no no i mean if, if there are questions i'm happy to take them you can take one or two more questions if there are any so i had a question swami ji uh -huh. uh, so you said that what i understood is so by default uh, the chakras are dormant uh, is that and we have to uh, awaken or purify cleanse the ch chakras or and what if we are able to do it in this lifetime i mean achieve some level of it in this lifetime Uh, but again in the next lifetime will it be dormant again when you study uh, in class 5 and give the exam hmm? and at the end of that exam suppose you your father is transferred and so you go to a different school for the class 6 what happens to you do you still go to class 5 because you have changed the school or do you go to class 6 class 6 hopefully <laughs> Dep depends on the school also sometimes <laughs> obviously it depends on the school but, <laughs> uh, but uh, i mean on a serious note yes answer to that is yes so same way when we have done something and we have you know passed that test then you always go ahead you know in uh, computer games especially uh, you i don't know if, what are the games now but when we used to be children there used to be uh, computer games wherein you had a person uh, he was stuck in a um, uh, enemy territory and he had only a knife with him and he had to do something 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 and he would get some points then suddenly he would get a small gun then he would get a bigger gun and you 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 know he would get an armor and this that the other so in the same uh, analogy you can say that initially we are just with a small knife but slowly and slowly and slowly we are able to upgrade ourselves step by step step by step step by step till a time we are able to have big armor and big this that the other so that we can achieve our goals let us not uh, give the example of uh, shooting people because that's a rather violent example but it is an example of increasing our abilities that happens with chakra thank you so much swami ji there is no other question can i ask a question i mean asking twice for taking permission no yeah, sure you can so uh, like uh, this swami ji he had all his chakras awakened i never asked him that question he never did and have you experienced i never i never needed to i never needed to because if you look at his life hmm if you look at his life then you would know that yes he did although all his life he kept on saying that oh no i am just an ordinary person i am only an ordinary person but hmm can you or i sit in fire at 80 degrees 90 degrees 100 degrees celsius and be calm comfortable happy oh if you try to be in uh, fire 
80, 90 degrees, 100 degrees Celsius for more than two minutes, the entire body physiology goes for a toss. Yeah. But here was a person who nine long years spent time in Panchagni Sadhana and many others. And he had one, two, three, four, north, south, east, west, and the sun on top. And this he would do from January to June. Makar Sankranti to Karka Sankranti. The time when the heat rises in the sun. And the temperatures used to go to 80, 90 degrees, 100 degrees Celsius. And he would sit there and he would be focusing on his breath and his Guru Mantra. And nothing would happen to him. And Swami Niranjananji, he once gave a very nice, he, he related a very nice story. He said that Gurudev was doing Panchagni Sadhana. And two of these uh, Guru Bhais, they thought Swami Niranjananji was one of them. He was telling about him and another sannyasi. said, Chalo, hum bhi karke dekhte hain. So they sat down in the sun, not in front of the fire because Swamiji would never allow that. So they said, Chalo, hum dhup mein baitte hain. And they sat for one or one and a half hours, he said. And then they had such a massive headache and the fever came and there was so much of, uh, you know, that uh, heat stroke that they were in bed for one and a half weeks. And then he said, oh my God, no, 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 never again. But then the same Swami Niranjananji now performs Panchagni Sadhana. What does it indicate? Hmm. Through, through meditation, through sadhana. Asana. I don't have to explain. Samajda ko ishara mm -hmm. kafi. Mm -hmm. Okay, Swamiji. We have to practice this over and over and over and over again. Do not think that if you practice in 15 days, I have done one Chakra Shuddhi course and now I am master. No, If that was the case, we would have masters all over the world. And, you know, uh, I think that used to happen in Uttar Pradesh. In Uttar Pradesh, you have gurus everywhere. Nowadays, so everybody there, there, kuch bhi ho jayega, he's management guru, he's investment guru, he's this guru, that guru. Please remember, the word guru is very sacred. Guru means the dispeller of darkness. And it means the spiritual darkness. It does not mean anything else. And in a place where you have the Siddha Mahatma, then that energy is different. So, when we are away from that energy, we feel disconnected from it. Actually, we are not disconnected. It is like the radio says that I am not connected to BBC. It is not that. The radio has to tune in. The moment it tunes in, immediately BBC starts transmitting. Correct? Right? You agree? Nobody seems to agree. Yes, Swami. Yes, yes. agree. So in the same manner, we need to connect. And what is the way out? Abhyasa Vairagyam. All these distractions need to be put away by Abhyasa and Vairagyam. And what is Abhyasa? Tatra sthitav yatnaha Abhyasa. And what is the other attributes? Satu dirga kalena nairantarya satkara serito dhruda bhumi. And for that, lage raho munna bhai. You know, apne desi bhasha mein to wahi hai na, lage raho munna bhai. Jab lage raho ho jayega, tab apne se sab bata hai. So, therefore, even if you have done courses earlier, it will certainly be beneficial because you can actually reactivate those things. Swami, so, I, I have a question. Yes. Online experience was amazing itself. 
सो नाउ माय नेक्स्ट लॉजिकल क्वेश्चन इज आप आश्रम एनवायरनमेंट में हमें कब करा रहे हैं फिर या आई वाज अबाउट टू आस्क द सेम क्वेश्चन इफ इट कैन बी ऑफलाइन ऐसा है ना कि बच्चा जो होता है ना बच्चा एक रसगुल्ला खाता है या एक आइसक्रीम खाता है तो अच्छा लगता है और बोलते हमको और आइसक्रीम चाहिए और आइसक्रीम चाहिए और आइसक्रीम चाहिए बहुत ज्यादा आइसक्रीम खाएगा क्या होगा बहुत ज्यादा रसगुल्ला खाएगा क्या होगा बीमार पड़ेगा बीमार पड़ जाएगा इंडाइजेशन होगा दस्त हो जाएगा यू नो इफ यू टेक टू मच देर इज इंडाइजेशन so everything has to happen in slow bits and pieces when the time is right automatically things start coming up please don't hurry up because it's nice no always slow and steady slow and steady slow and steady that allows your body to acclimatize otherwise there can be lot of uh, reactions you see what we are doing in an online course is a very very moderated practice so that it doesn't create any problems because you are so many miles away i mean if you have some difficulty i can't even do anything to you know maybe there's nobody in the room you are all alone in the house so if you suddenly go into a trance and something starts happening what can i do I can't do anything so therefore it has to be slow and the very fact that you are going into a trance and you are not able to handle yourself that means your body is not ready for the next level so first get the hardware upgraded and once the hardware is upgraded the software upgrades itself automatically wo oh, auto syncing ka facility isme hai ye jo computer hai na usme auto syncing hote rehta hai theek hai so if these are all the questions then uh, shall we complete if you have any other questions then you can always uh, send me aap uh, shilpa usme email dal dijiyega and uh, whatsapp group i think all of us are in different whatsapp groups so uh, we can uh, easily connect to that way.